Welcome to Ed Leah Scallon's workshop. This is Roy back again. Today we are going to uh, do a follow-up from my last video. Uh, I hooked up a potentiometer to our little uh, Tesla coil circuit and I put the potentiometer uh, in between the um, secondary start and the base of the transistor. So we'll go over that and show you how I hooked it up and uh, the lights still do light up. So that's interesting in itself. And you can turn it down a little bit. It only run when it's wide open. Turn it down a little bit. Uh, you can see uh, some of the pulsations in the light. And I'll show you guys that, which is interesting because I've learned some new things by this new little study, which um, it kind of confirms the directional path of the uh, circuit here and, and uh, the flow of the hose. So what you're looking at right here, guys, uh, I had mentioned a comment on my last video that I was working on two cone coils. And what the plan here is to go ahead and I'm using 24 gauge magnetic wire, two towers of paper cones, and I am wrapping them from the point on out clockwise. And I am making a mm, eighth of an inch, a little bit varies to a quarter inch, a little less um, spaces in between the coil. Now this is going to be different from your Tesla type of towers because they are wound to where they are touching each other and going up perfectly all the way up. And why I chose to use a different method on these coils instead of wrapping those tight is because in between the uh, wrappings, the copper wire itself, there's going to be a, um, it's going to re uh, create resistance and it's going to uh, create capacitance. So that's why we are uh, building these totally spaced out. Now, the what we're going to do is, uh, the plan of direction for these guys, is we're going to uh, cut the other one in half, and we are going to insert them together so they um, make this creation that uh, of a theory that I've read, and it's called a uh, double helix theory of magnetic fields and that's who it's written by you guys uh, go online look it up it's unbelievable and if you want to read through that I'll put it up so you can read it and it is incredible and you can freeze frame it on your video and read it because here you can see who we're dealing with, what they were writing about, and how this right here applies. So hopefully you read that. If not, you're going to have to freeze it and read it. And it goes into the um, theory of the double helix. So back to the cones, you can see I'm using pins here. And what I'm doing is uh, separating the space to create that capacitance. And then once I get it all the way down bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some lacquer, some clear, that'll hold it in place. And then I'll pull the pins out. And then I will do the same thing on this one here, except for this one here has a slice in it. And I'm not sure I have that one sliced in the right spot, which I don't think I do. So I might have to join that back together. 
and cut a little bit more down here, but we're gonna have this one cut directly in half. So at the point of the top of this cone to the, the big wide mouth part, we're gonna find a middle. And in this middle, in between the lines of down here in the middle, we are going to take this separation and run the copper wire through one of these. And what's going to happen at a 90 degree angle. <clears throat> and what's going to happen is we're going to create a center double helix vortex. And what we're going to do is come over to our circuit over here and we're going to oscillate it. And before we go, we go to oscillate it, we're going to learn a little bit more about oscillation. So back to the video I made earlier, guys. Um, yes, potentiometer. We come in, um, let's start over here. We're coming out of the, that is the start to the secondary, okay? The, the coil up is, the tower's the secondary. It comes along and it runs to this wire. Now that red comes to the start of the potentiometer to the far left. That would be your positive, far right is your negative. Leave that out, don't even hook that up. The middle is your transmitting out of this potentiometer. So you're gonna come, so you went in directly from the trigger. Right guys, like I said earlier, this coil basically is the drag line. So when you're sending all this energy through the thick primary, it runs to the gates. Well, one is in to the gate, to the input. The tower is the trigger that opens up the gate, but what this creates is a lag time. So it slows it down. So this gives itself oscillation because it's slowing down one end and the part that slowed down is obviously the tower so when you think about this how this actually works you can really use it in in different ways on some of your projects that you guys are working on so whatever you're working on you got to just think about it how it works like this so it kind of opens up your doors on understanding this whole tesla tower now whether you use this kind of array or you use any slayer or you use even like, Dad, yo, come here. I'm busy making a video. Be a minute. Is it emergency? Didn't think so. Anyway, you know how kids are. So um, I, you also have the other dimmer switch going to the AC, coming out of the car coil, high voltage uh, into the same system doing the same thing except for your higher voltage. This one burns your skin, the other one shocks your skin. So um, I think that is because of the oscillation speed and this is a lot slower than what the AC is. And we'll experiment with that because I'm excited to even try some of those. But back to this circuit here, guys. So we have the potentiometer here and basically if I turn it, I can't get much out of it. So I got the light lit. So what does that say to us? So that says that we're interrupting like a like a like a um, like a like a uh, 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 what do they call those uh, a shunt? In in and our shunt is basically in where the the trigger releases. So basically, if now we have 400 turns of copper, you, when you add the potentiometer, it's the same thing as adding, you know, a, in, in, an infinite amount of more copper line. So the more you turn the dial, the more line you're adding. You're stretching out the, the, the wave. So you create more of a tower. So this does work. It's lit. And it, it definitely has its, you know, powers and, and it's doing it. And it's directly coming from the oscillation out of the tower into the potentiometer and back out into the um, array of how we have this set up and it's got the light lit. So if you turn the potentiometer down, you know, just a little bit, you can see the, the light will dim a little bit 
and let's, let's turn it down just a little bit. See it? There it is. So it just dimmed down, dim up, dim down, dim up, dim down. But if you go any more, it turns off. So there it goes. It just turned off. So I got to turn it back up. And then I'm going to have to come over here and just reboot. And there it goes. It's reset. So now you got that that works. And it, it kind of shows you that now we can add more water length to our tower by using a potentiometer. And, and, and you can stretch out the wavelength by, by doing that. Now, another thing I want to show you is, last and final thing is, right here I have the four foot fluorescent light bulb lit up. Now, this study here, uh, I just happened to run across because I was just kind of thinking oscillation. Now, I'm going to step back and show my hand because I know you see it because I see it in the phone. And what you see is a wave inside the four-foot fluorescent. Now, you see that wave moving towards my hand, okay? Now, look on the other side. Look at the speed of the wavelength coming out from the other side of my hand. Now, look on this side. Go back over here. You can see it moving. Let's go. To, let's talk about that. Now, what that is is you got the oscillation of the trigger that's this tower is performing inside the circuit, and pretty much it's capturing because that's a diode on one side there. That part of this light, you know, has its diodes on the ends. So basically, it's capturing. The, the break inside the signal collapsing and going up. But you also see my hand is going, is the ground to make this light light up. And on that side, it is going crazy in oscillation because what that wants to do from my hand on out, it wants to find, it wants to go back to ground or the grid pretty much. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the grid because I, I don't hear a lot of people talk about this, and this is something that I've been working on, and this is part of my cone, double helix cone. Um, uh, that cone is kind of familiar to me, too, because there was a story out there that I heard with Eslia Scallon that he'd take these cones, had one in each hand, he would put them over the, these rocks, and he would levitate the rocks. Now, I, I'm trying to go back to where I heard that story, and it's a fascinating story because basically if you go to the cones that I'm making, the reason I'm making those cones is because I want to create a residency. And when you put these two and have the, the oscillation go in between them and they be, create a residency, if you separate the cones, anything in between the cones should in, be in the field of residency and it's able to be able to levitate. And that's one of the things I want to try out with these cones. Back to Edlia Scallon. Pretty fascinating stuff. Now, whether it works or not, we're going to find out. But we're going to do a lot of studies with those cones. And with the double helix and the two, the two oscillating high energy going into each other. Should be fascinating to see. Back to my four foot bulb here. You can see it oscillating into my hand on the other side it's it's moving a lot faster okay and now i want you to notice one thing so on the tower here what what's happening is back to what i was saying earlier that there's a sprinkle spray coming out of it and it's all electrons electrons need to go other places to find ground or go back to the grid that's the planet earth has and it'll find its way back to the grid and watch on this right here as I lower it. Watch what happens. All of a sudden, look at the directional flow difference now on the tube. Up here, it goes outward. Down here by the primary, it moves inward, okay? But on the other side of my hand, guys, we're still moving outward. But over here, we're moving inward. You know why, guys? Because the end part of that primary, remember, goes to the positive input, okay? So that's the juice coming in. So it's running through that primary. 
it's coming out the other end and going in to the start of the circuit. So it's going.